All right, we're back on Cleveland.com alongside Paul Hoynes and Bud Shaw. I'm Zach Meisel. A little spring training roundtable. And guys, let's talk about the lineup now. This was a group that struggled at points. It was kind of feast or famine. And they add Brandon Moss, who, if healthy, can be a power hitter in the middle of the order. Hoynesy, what does he do to that lineup? Does he make it easier for the guys around him? Oh, yeah. If he's healthy, I mean, this is a guy that had... 21 home runs at the All-Star break last year. Then, you know, the hip caught up to him and he kind of disappeared. But this is a guy that you can you can put in the fourth or fifth spot, maybe the fifth spot behind Santana, and you can build around him. He makes that lineup that much longer. I mean, you don't have to mess with Gomes. You can leave Gomes in the seventh spot where he did so much damage last year. Hopefully, you know, Kipnis and, and Swisher are, are back and you fit those guys in somehow. But I think this is a guy, if he's healthy, he really, you know, he, he really helps that, that lineup. Don't you want Gomes hitting higher than that? Well, the thing is with Gomes, you know, Francona likes a guy like at the bottom of the order. Remember uh, 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 Mark Reynolds? Sure. Kind of a, an ambush hitter, like a guy that can hit seventh or eighth and, uh, you know, can take the ball out of the park. You don't want to give, he hates giving pitchers, you know, a free ride every three innings at the bottom of the order. And, you know, I think Gomes, I mean, maybe we'll see how, how he gets better if he improves as a hitter, but he got, ex you know, he gets exposed, I think, the higher you bring him up in the lineup because he looked struck out 120 times. Yeah. He's got a lot of swing and miss. There were a lot of ifs and buts in, in your kind of lineup order there. It seems like this offense really is about guys either bouncing back or yeah. doing what they did in the past. Is that worrisome? I think so. I mean, I, although I'll say this, one of the guys that has to bounce back is Kipnis, and we all know what he can mean in, in, the, in the middle of the order, hitting third or wherever they would have him. And he's, you know, I, I look at last year as an aberration for him. I mean, he's hit almost at every yeah. level, almost every year that he's been in, in, a, a professional, uh, in professional baseball. So I like the fact that he, if, he, if you're counting on guys to come back and do something, that he's one of them because I think he's going to be a different player this year. I think when you envision this lineup and you think you're probably going to have Bourne at the top, Brantley in the three-hole, Santana, Moss, you know, Gomes somewhere in there, when you get to the bottom of the order and you realize Chisholm may hit ninth, then it kind of reduces the anxiety you have over, what if, well, what if he is as streaky as he was last year? Well, that's probably not a big deal when he's hitting ninth. And the same thing goes for guys like Kipnis. You know, if, if Kipnis and Swisher both can't rebound, but one of them does, I think the lineup's in pretty good shape. Yeah. The key to me, a, a, well, an important guy is Bourne. Uh, what Bourne are we going to see? Are we going to see the guy that stole 50 to 60 bases, averaged, you know, 50 to 60 steals in the National League? Or are we going to see this guy that, that the Indians have had for two years that doesn't walk, doesn't steal, has to hit his way on base? I mean, this is a guy, this guy sets up the whole lineup. They want him to, to get on base. He's been training with a track coach over the winter. Let's go. You know, this is a time for him to step up. And, you know, he's in the middle of this contract. I, I think if he even resembles the Michael Bourne they thought they were getting, this is going to be a dangerous lineup. Well, let me ask you, like, not that we consider worst-case scenarios, but if they have to make a move at shortstop and bring Lindor up, what does that do to the lineup? You know, I don't think it does too much. I mean, you're probably going to hit – uh, you know, Ramirez opens the season at at, uh, at shortstop. He probably hits second or ninth. You'd probably do the same thing with Lindor. you probably hit Lindor real, down in the order yeah, you wouldn't just to protect him. Yeah. The projections from guys like Bill James or the Pocota or the Steamers who use data statistics to project what they're going to do this year, they say Brantley will have a drop-off in power and average a little bit. Does that... Is that that critical in this lineup, though? It seems like it should be a deeper lineup, and he won't have to carry them as much. Yeah, I don't think he's going to hit 327. I don't think he's going to get 200 hits again, or you know. But if you look at his number, the last four years, he's he's his you know his graph is on the upswing, and I think it's going to continue like that. Maybe black plateaus a little bit, but this is still a guy that you know they they found a spot for him in the number three spot. He he was in the, he hit in the clutch. You know, runners in scoring position. He was, you know, he was very, very dangerous. So I think, <clears throat> I think he's still going to be okay, I, I, even if he doesn't hit 327. You okay with Carlos Santana as your cleanup? <clears throat> Absolutely. I, I, I know fans get frustrated watching him at times, but I, I, I like the guy. I think he's going to have a big year. All right, that's it for the lineup. Plenty more to come on Cleveland.com. This is our spring training roundtable.